What's up guys, this is Max Maxworks and today uh, we are going to rebuild an SV650 and flip it. And in previous videos, I've spent a lot of time showing you guys technical details, how I fix bikes, how I get around stuff. But in this video, we're actually gonna focus on the business side of it um, as much as on the fixing side. Because this bike, to fix it, is gonna be pretty straightforward. Um, and so I just wanted to walk you guys through, because I get a lot of questions about this, about how I make money flipping bikes. And there's, there's a lot of things that you learn over time that make you more efficient. And I want to share some of those secrets in this video uh, and hopefully we'll help you guys out and making money for yourselves. Um, I apologize, the dog is going crazy inside the house. So I picked up this today, uh, literally about an hour ago for 400 bucks. This is a 2002 Suzuki SV650S. Um, it has obviously had some sort of front end impact. Uh, this bike has a clean blue Texas title and it has not run in several months. Uh, the battery is completely dead. Um, we're gonna try to revive it, but most likely we're gonna end up having to just buy another battery. Not a big deal. Um, and I will take you guys through kind of my process on how I, how I go about tackling a project like this. So uh, the first tech tip that I'm gonna give you is you need to be meticulous. Uh, for me personally, for my business, I have a dedicated spreadsheet for each motorcycle that helps me keep track of how much money I spend and what I spend it on. Additionally, I have a master spreadsheet in which I keep all the information, date of purchase, person I bought it from, their address, their phone number, any information I have about them um, goes into that spreadsheet. And then uh, when I sell it, I you know enter that information in the spreadsheet, how many miles I put on the bike, everything. Um, because I found that you never go back and think, huh, man, I wasted 10 seconds of my life filling out this spreadsheet. It's always the other way around. It's always some piece of information that you wish you still had, uh, but you don't. And so I've already done all of that. This bike is in my records. Uh, we're ready to start working on it. And I actually just went ahead and went inside and ordered some of the stuff we're going to need. Um, obviously, these forks are completely boned. Um, as far as I can tell, the triple is okay, but the uh, the forks are done. So I've ordered new forks. I've ordered a fender replacement. I'm really hoping this wheel is still straight. Uh, and I will probably end up ordering a new axle once we pull all this apart and kind of see what the situation is. Um, the battery is totally dead. I did jump it against the scooter over here to uh, see that it's got about 30,000 miles. Um, which is a little bit more, but you know, it's not too bad for these SV bikes. Uh, part of the reason I wanted to make this video is because this bike is like the ubiquitous starter bike. The Ninja 500s and the SV 650s, this is a carbureted bike. Um, everybody starts on these, they're super easy to sell um, because people buy them and sell them all the time. It's everybody's first, first bike. And this one's pretty nice. Somebody's put some sort of aftermarket undertail kit on it, like a fiberglass undertail kit. Um, and like a few other things. So we're just going to basically get it ready to go back on the road and then sell it. And at the end of this video, um, I'll make sure this video doesn't end before I sell it. So I'll, I'll reveal how much I sold it for and, and what kind of profit I made on this bike. And this is very typical of the deals that I find uh, and bring home. Now, again, to put things in perspective, I drove about an hour and a half outside of Austin to pick up this bike. So that's three hours each way. So if you want to count things like your time and mileage on your truck and so on, um, you absolutely can. I don't. Um, it doesn't really bother me. But that's definitely something that you can focus on if you want. So now that we've kind of done this cursory overview, um, I'm going to start tearing into the bike and kind of see what's going on here. Um, because... If we, the goal for tonight is basically just to get everything torn apart so I can figure out what parts I need. Um, and then once I know what parts I need, I can order them because right now we're in the middle of the pandemic and it's taking, you know, three to five days longer to get anything delivered than uh, it usually does. And so I'm trying to be, uh, you know, on top of it. So that's it for the talking part. Let's get to the action.
Okay, so let me give you kind of a quick recap of what we've done. Basically pulled apart the entire front end. Um, the wheel itself looks straight and I'll set up uh, here in a second and show you guys how I check that. Um, both of these forks are bent. This one is quite obviously bent and this one is slightly less obviously but also bent. And this is why it's good to take stuff apart early. You can see the axle is also clearly bent right here. So we'll have to get a new one. Um, it's not a big deal to get new axles. Like that's like an extra 15 bucks or something. But you don't want to be ready to put the bike back together and then realize, oh fuck, this axle is bent and I can't use it. Um, I'm not going to pull apart this stuff right here right now because it comes apart very quickly and it's easier when you have the new bar here to just transfer all this over and then mount the new bar. Um, I basically just left all the bolts in it. We, um, this is another quick, quick tip. Cardboard boxes, keep them. This is all my scooter stuff. This is all my SV stuff. It lives in this cardboard box. I can find all the bolts when I need them. Um, it looks like I've also noticed this right here, this radiator is trash, um, just from general inspection. So now we know we need another radiator. Um, and we know not to suck the bike until we got some water in it. Got the battery pulled out. Basically what you can do to try to revive these batteries is jumper them against a good battery and then hook it up to a charger. And so there's a, there's a, a, a voltage drop, but it's able to bring it up from, this battery is at 0.6. It's probably not recoverable, but leaving it on like this overnight, I'll check it in the morning. If it's junk, I'll order another one. Uh, lately, I've been finding these batteries at the same price on Amazon that they are on eBay, but on Amazon, I can get them next day delivered or two days or whatever. So the battery is not a big liability. Um, the radiator is going to add cost and complexity, so I need to go order that tonight. Um, but other than that, these bikes are super easy to take apart. This is an excellent flipper bike. If you ever get an opportunity to have one, they're very easy to work on. They're very easy to sell. And uh, we're going to get this one uh, going down the road here pretty quick. So on a lot of bikes, this is nothing more than a half inch um, impact extension. These are often about the right size. So all you really do is just thread it through both sets of bearings. And then I just roll it forward and hold it up and hold it level. And usually if there's any real damage or bend to the wheel, you're going to be able to look down and see it. Um, if you look down and it seems to be perfectly straight on both edges, make sure you check both sides of it visually. Um, that's a good wheel. That's a huge relief. Uh, front wheels on sports bikes are very expensive. Just keep that in mind whenever you're looking at bikes. Um, it's very easy to spend $300 on a bare wheel with no rotors or anything. Uh, in fact, when I buy bikes for parts that I sell for parts, um, the front wheel is a big item because it sells very quickly and it's a lot of money. So if the front wheel is good, I'm willing to overlook other issues with the bike for a parts bike because I know I'm going to make a good chunk of money right back. And that is true of pretty much any 17 inch sport bike, quasi sport bike wheel on the market. Well, I got a few more parts in so we're able to keep working on it. Uh, the big thing is these guys, these came in, these are my forks. These are our new fork seals. Um, a quick mini eBay rant about forks and fork seals. My rule is if you buy used forks on the internet, expect to have to rebuild them. Uh, unless they're either A, professionally rebuilt, or B, are um, like, you know, dealer takeoffs or something. Um, just expect to have to rebuild them. I managed to get these forks for $100 delivered, which is a fantastic price. Uh, oil and seals add another 30 bucks to it. It's a really easy process. And a lot of people, for some reason, have this trepidation about rebuilding forks. Uh, conventional forks like these are, are super simple to rebuild. It'll probably take me 30, 35 minutes to do both of them uh, on camera. And I've done videos on how to rebuild this before, so we're just going to time lapse through this. Let me
So here's kind of our layout. This is your preload spacer. This is your main spring. This is your helper spring. This is the tube. So this screws into the bottom right here. And I've never had uh, one fight me this hard, so I ended up having to use this as an eight millimeter. Um, used to be a, a hex. I just cut it down so I could use it with the gun because um, it needed to be longer. I didn't have any long hex bits. Um, this is going to be your shaft. These are going to be your bearings. Um, you want to take a close look at this, make sure it's not damaged. These look in excellent condition. Uh, this is the seal. We're replacing this. This is the dust cap. We're replacing this. It's hard as a rock. And this is the retainer. So reassembly is exactly the opposite. The only specialty thing you got to do uh, is find out the fluid level is supposed to be and then measure it um, using a dipstick. And I'll, sh I'll key into that uh, next. Um, but both sides of this fork are going to behave exactly the same. So let me start getting this reassembled and then I'll uh, walk you through filling the fluid level. spring is in there and you want uh, the manual says 497 milliliters I think or 495 milliliters the trick is 92 uh, millimeters from the end of this to here so this is our little dipstick and it just goes down in the middle and basically whenever the fluid just touches the bottom of this guy we know we're at the right fluid level so there's a couple of tricks you want to make sure that uh, you thread this in by hand and normally I just snug it up with a ratchet Try that again. Normally I snug it up with a ratchet, um, but it's going to rotate the, uh, the fork. So you don't want to worry about torquing this down until it's back in the bike and the triple is holding the fork tube for you. But you can tighten this up to make sure it doesn't leak anywhere. And just like that, one fork is rebuilt. Uh, I'm going to clean up the outside of it a little bit uh, and I'm going to do the other one off camera and then we'll be ready to put it back in the bike. For whatever reason, my super cheap uh, little front fender here, it's already gotten a bit dirty, uh, didn't come with rib nuts installed in it. Um, normally there's little rib nuts that are in here that the screw threads through, so we're just gonna install them. These are standard M6 rib nuts. This is a standard rib nut tool. And you can see the factory holes fit perfectly. There's one. And now we're just gonna do the other three and get this front end back on the bike. So here's the front end all reassembled. Basically just a matter of screwing everything back together, um, setting the correct torque on the wheel. Um, and this is all pretty much reassembled. We've got our screws in here, our fender is on. Um, I realize we still have to replace the radiator which hasn't come in yet, but it looks like there's plenty of space in here to do that. Even with this front assembly in here, that's not always the case. Um, but we got the brakes on, got everything in the front on, and next thing we're going to do is we're going to tackle this handlebar. So next, I already did this off camera because I did it at like 2 o'clock in the morning because I was drunk, but our new radiator is in. The bike's had an oil change. Um, and now it's listed on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace uh, for 2,500 bucks. So I have to check the spreadsheet and I'll post the real numbers in the video. But I think we're in this bike, we bought it for 400 bucks, um, probably another $300 into it because um, that radiator was kind of expensive. And uh, so we'll, we'll call it 700 bucks. We're listing for 2,500. Probably going to sell definitely north of 2K, um, hopefully in the 22, 23 range. But I rode it this morning, showed it to a guy. Um, we'll see if that pans out. But I just listed it. Today's, today's Friday. I listed it last night. And I've got five people lined up for this weekend to look at this thing. So we'll, we'll see how that plays out. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you want to see... 
like real live updates. Follow my Instagram at MaxWorks. Check out my Instagram story. Um, there's lots of cool bikes to come through there that don't make it onto the YouTube channel because maybe they're not, not, not a big enough project for it. Um, and just kind of just day to day cool shit you guys want to see, see me build. Um, that said, I love you guys. I'm going to post the final numbers. I'm going to post the beauties here right after this. Love you guys. Peace. You're driving me crazy.